This entitled soccer dad is the coach of a team, and he's a complete monster, but he's about to get the surprise of his life when he yells at the wrong person. Happy birthday, today's your birthday, on with the revamped show. Last weekend, my grandpa had to be tested for the world infamous virus since he was feeling a bit sick. My aunt was worried for him, so she came for a visit, wearing a mask of course. Luckily, he tested negative. During her visit, she was chatting with my grandma and my uncle about family things, and I heard her talking about her parents' daughter. I asked for her details, and it seemed to me that she fits the definition of entitled. Disclaimer, some details might be inaccurate, both because of my language and the fact that I I don't know this person in real life, so it's told from my aunt's perspective. This was also last weekend, so I might have forgotten some things as well. In the cast is A my aunt, AP my aunt's partner. For privacy reasons, let's call him Joe. ED, the star of the show. EX, Joe's ex-wife and ED's mother. NS, normal son. Joe's teenage son who is the opposite of his older sister. PU, my political uncle. And my aunt's ex-husband. He's not important to the story though. So my aunt divorced. PU a decade or so ago, and she's been living with Joe since. They're on a free union, as in a romantic union where they aren't married. Some info about my aunt. My aunt is a lovely person, the total opposite of the many entitled aunts I've read about on this sub. She is intelligent, funny, makes us smile. She's easy to talk to, she's a good listener who gives good advice, and she even enjoys watching movies or playing video games with us. Her favourite series are Yoshi and Resident Evil. She admits she's a bit shy and introverted, much like me and my sister, which is probably why we get along so well with her. She divorced PU when I was younger, which made me feel bad, but later on, I realised PU spent money on alcohol, which is probably why the relationship didn't last. Her current partner, Joe, works as a civil engineer, is that the correct term? Who sells medical supplies to clinics and hospitals, and because of the world infamous virus, they've been making good money, though I don't suppose they're rich now. I haven't asked them how they met, but I know they have a healthy relationship with each other. According to my aunt, Joe divorced X because her side of the family has a history of abuse as far as I know. Naturally, X was as well. I don't know if X and A have interacted much, but my best bet is that they probably don't like each other and most likely have had minimal contact with each other. You probably guessed how X's first spawn turned out to be, right? Yep, it's time to move on to today's antagonist. ED. ED is Joe's daughter, who is currently in her mid-twenties. My aunt describes her as a horrible person, and for good reason. She is rude, lazy, always in a bad mood, and, well, a disappointment. And no, don't think A would be a bad stepmother. Here's why. Whenever Joe's family came to visit A, she tried her best to get along with ED, except that ED always acted rude and condescending. You might think she acts this way because naturally, a child wouldn't want to associate with their parents' lover. Yeah, it's understandable, but it's not just that. Apparently, ED acted like it was her house and probably thrashed the place as well. The next time ED and her family visited, A tried to ignore her and had minimal contact with ED, but ED complained to her father Joe about how A purposely ignored her. A had enough of her, so when they left, she had a talk with Joe, saying ED was no longer welcome. Joe agreed, because he admits he's disappointed in his daughter. Remember NS? Well, he's a teenager, and he's actually a good student. A and NS got along well, but since A doesn't want to associate with Joe's family anymore, they don't talk much. Back to ED. So do you think A should give her another chance? Well, no. ED is also a dropout. She's been put in several universities, only to either drop out or be kicked out, and it ends up being a waste of money. Goodness knows however the heck she graduated high school. As for X, she is also disappointed in her daughter, and a person like her is bound to kick their own disappointing child out of their home. And guess what? She did. Nowadays, EK lives on the second floor of Joe's office, with her lazy butt not doing anything important with her life. Oh, and the reason I'm putting her on the Entitled Parent sub is because ED has a two-year-old child. She got pregnant and dad doesn't want anything to do with them. And now ED is a single mother. Will she try to pull off the I'm a single mother card somewhere? It's possible, but maybe unlikely, since stories of Karens freaking out in public aren't often heard in my country. I sure hope NS ends up being better than his sister. Sometimes there are those people in life and you're just not surprised that they end up the way they do. 
and not necessarily because they had a bad childhood or anything like that, just they always seem to make bad choices. Oh, what's that? They dropped out of college again? Oh, now they got kicked out this time? Yeah, I'm not surprised. Like they said, the real surprise is that they finished high school in the first place. I don't know if this counts as entitled or not, or this guy was simply a massive douchebag, but I figured it was worth sharing anyways. This was back in 2007, when I was 16, but I remember it plain as day. I was playing in a game of youth soccer, football for you intellectuals, and it was the last game of the season. We had already clinched the league title, having gone undefeated with the most points and the most goals scored. We had a match against the last place team, who didn't win a single game all season. Their coach, who shall be called CED for coach and title douchebag, would always yell at his players for everything. If they made a bad pass, he would yell at them. If they missed a shot, he'd yell at them. Or even if they had a good play, he'd scream and tell them things like, why didn't you freaking pass to another player? Or, that wasn't good enough, you can't play for crap. Not only demeaning his players, but giving off that holier than thou attitude. We played them early in the season and won by a landslide, but they scored the first goal of the game. And even then, CED said, Why'd you shoot when we had another player wide open? I should mention that this guy looks like Worf from Star Trek, only if Worf was 5'8", with two and a half beer bellies. And no, I'm not exaggerating. This guy was not meant to be a coach for any sport of that matter. And all of that was shown in this particular game. We played them in the last game of the season at my hometown community college field. My mum was there to spectate with everyone else and sat in the bleachers behind where CED's team was. This is important to the story. We had scored a couple of times and could hear from a mile away his screaming and frustration with his team, saying things like, where the frick are you passing to? Or, who's marking him? Or, you're too darn slow. Why are you playing in that position? To make things worse, one of the team's players had an asthma attack five minutes into the second half with us, up 4-0. The ref stopped the game immediately to help assess the situation. That's when my mum went down to help. She had mild asthma and had the right type of inhaler for this player. When she handed over the inhaler, CED lost his cool. What are you doing sabotaging my player? Your player clearly has asthma. My player will be fine. Go away. My thoughts? Wow, what an ungrateful piece of crap. We eventually scored two more goals to make it 6-0, which made CED even more ticked and kept berating his teammates and even started trash talking my team, including me. There was one player who was arguably their best player who managed to score with me marking him. I'm a right back. Not gonna lie, it was a beautiful goal from 25 yards out. Coach decided to mock me saying too slow. Well, five minutes later, I put in a beautiful pass to assist our seventh and final goal of the match, right in front of him too. Once again, he berated his team with, how the frick did you let that pass through? After the game ended, we went to shake hands with the other team, as you should do because you know, sportsmanship. But CED went on another tirade. You better not shake hands with them, you hear me? But coach, it's sportsman. I don't care, don't shake hands, let's just leave. Then the most amazing turn of events happened. Without missing a beat, someone came off from the bleachers to talk to CED, the president of the league, LP for short. LP went up to him with a smile on his face. He goes, excuse me, is there an issue? CED replied with, this game was freaking bullcrap. The whole league is run by idiots. What's it to ya? And without missing a beat, LP responded, you do realize you're speaking to the president of the league, right? CED went pale, but it didn't deter him from digging himself a deeper hole. Yeah? Well, you all don't do a good job. You rigged this league so they could win. You're a bunch of corrupt jerks. And in an instant, the LP gave him a crushing response. You know what? I've heard enough. You're hereby banned from coaching youth soccer in the state of California. Your license will be revoked. All will be effective immediately. Have a nice day. Now please exit the field. This is bull crap! I didn't stutter when I said leave. Now go. 
CED left, grumbling like a drunk deadbeat dad with anger issues. But the team just stood there, unsure of what to do. That's when my coach told us, when we exit the field, we'll shake hands with the team. And that's what we did. I honestly felt really bad for that team, and did go talk to a player. Hey, good game. Good effort. And I honestly cannot believe that was your coach. The player replied with, yeah, thanks. Good game. You guys deserve the title. We really don't like him. He would always put us down all season. Even during practice, it hurt our morale. I was taken aback by that. I could not believe a whole team endured that all season. My team even offered them some of the snacks we had as a good gesture and went home afterwards. I've been in games where we got crushed and even then, none of those times we were belittled and insulted. I have never felt so bad for another team in my life when we beat them badly. As for the coach, I hope he never coached a youth sports team ever again. I didn't mention the player with the asthma attack was okay. That player forgot their inhaler that day and didn't play for the rest of the game. It was good that my mum had the proper medication for it or the outcome would have been worse. A coach can make all the difference in a team. Yes, the players need to be individually skilled and train and practice themselves, but a coach's goal is to bring the best out of the team, both as individuals and working together. I know it's one of those cliche things, but it's true. It doesn't matter how much individual skill you have, if you're not working as a team, you're going to lose. It is possible that that team with the bad coach could have had the best individually skilled players, but if the coach doesn't motivate them to work hard to be the best that they can be, and how to use their skills to efficiently work together as a team, well of course they're going to lose. A good coach, a good teacher, can make all the difference. We are both 18, are dating for two and a half years now, and moved in together completely not long ago. My mother, as said, heavily despises her on a basis of foreign background. Eva is a daughter of a Muslim immigrant in this country and is of descent of what today are three countries, hint Balkans. It is not just this though, Eva has vitiligo, which in my mother's eyes is absolutely disgusting. For me however, Eva is by far the best and most beautiful person ever. I love her more than anyone. Addition from Eva, same. We are writing this together as it's best for Eva to write it directly. A few days ago, my mother has verbally attacked Eva on her social media, which led both of us to delete our accounts, report her for hate speech, and change our numbers. It turned out today, this was kind of meant to cause a rift between me, Eva, and her family, so she could do the nastiest things she has done. Eva writing, I have talked with my parents about the situation, and understandably, they were very mad with OP's mother's behavior and opinions. They have told me to be cautious around her and to not seek her out. They as well expressed their concerns about OP becoming the same piece of crap. They however said that it seems unlikely and said that they were grateful to him for standing up for me in such a way. But yeah, the trust damage is indeed there. OP writing. So what's the nasty thing? Well, my mother has a friend, whom I'll call Karen, who has a daughter, whom I'll call Susan. Susan, in all honesty, is a good looking girl, but she's not my type at all and isn't Eva. Well, the same thing. There's a ton of reasons why I particularly don't like Susan. Anyway, Susan is 17 and has recently been through a messed up breakup. From what I was told by my dad and from what my three brain cells produced, Karen reached out to my mother. If she could get me and Susan together, which prompted my mother's verbal attack on Eva's social media. Anyway, on to the events of today. Shortly after we came back from school, I got a call from my dad saying that both Eva and I urgently have to come to my parents' house. I tried to keep Eva out of this. However, no, she had to go too. So my dad is already awaiting us at the gate. Hello, what's the emergency? Well, it's about you and Eva. I came home from work early today to walk into Karen and Susan visiting. As it turns out, they're plotting something against you two. Note, my dad really likes Eva and was always very supportive, both about our relationship and us moving in together, my mother. What are you doing here? It is regarding me and Eva. Eva, we have a full right to be here. What is the reason for us to be here? How dare you change your contacts and not tell me? How dare you insult me about my family, about how I look, and publicly? Don't talk to me like that. Anyway, I think it's time to be honest here. OP, I know you like Susan more. I know you're seeing her. Eva writing, I absolutely didn't know what to think. Is she right? Is OP seeing someone else? Or is his mother just a fitch again? I teared up and couldn't say anything. I just stood there not 
stop trying to cry. OP writing. Eva, remember the crap she is saying about you? Do you really believe her? Trust me, I would never do such a thing. Uh, this is taking too long. Why don't you just date Susan instead? She is much better. I don't understand how someone can find her, Eva, good looking. Nobody insults Eva without me going nuclear. I do. I don't understand how someone can find you particularly good looking. Yes, Susan is nice and all, but not my type. How dare you insult me like that? I'm doing a favor by offering you my daughter instead of this disgusting freak of nature. Dad and Eva tries to say something. And how dare you insult her like that, you whale? She's the most beautiful person ever, while you look like a dying walrus. I'm incredibly sorry if I insulted any dying walruses or whales. Eva writing, I have never been prouder and happier with how I look, though it still hurts being insulted after what I had to undergo because of it. OP writing, All right, enough. Get out of my house. I won't tolerate such behavior. Yes, get your freak out, you two little insolent brats. Uh, he meant Karen and Susan. No, that's fine. I don't want this brat. Me. Near Susan. Let him be with that disgusting fitch. Stomps off. Me shouting at Karen. But you know what? At least you have a bit of sense. Susan apologized for her mother's behavior and left. How dare you embarrass me like that? All because you don't understand that I want the best for you. You're doing this to yourself. And if you really do, then leave us alone. No, I don't want you to be with filthy and disgusting immigrant. Screw you. I'm proud of my origins and how I look. Don't be a fitch because you're insecure. How dare you, you little insolent bitch? How can someone look so disgusting and be proud of it? She attempts to hit Eva. I, however, hold her back, mainly to protect Eva from beating the crap out of my mother and facing charges. To car Eva now. You once more. One single time again, and we're pressing insult to honor and assault charges. Whatever. Don't you come crying to me when you break up. You wish. Eva and I then left. We then discussed what we should do next and concluded that I'm serious with my threat of pressing charges. My dad isn't happy about the current situation. However, wishes us all the best and we still have his full support. You know, I'm glad they at least have one parent's support because it would be really hard if they both were against them. And it seems like Eva's side isn't super, super supportive, but they're not against them either. At least they're giving them a chance, you know? I'm sure it's scary for every parent when their kid is gonna start dating and be in relationships, but you can't control them. They're an individual and they're independent. It doesn't mean you have to support their choices, but you don't have to be their enemy. It's only gonna make things worse. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. All right, Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.